Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to look at uh, yet another optimization, or a look at how we can you know, further improve our 1D convolution kernel. So we're going to do this with a method that we've seen in other videos, which is using shared memory. Now, the first thing we need to do is kind of understand you know, what exactly we're loading into shared memory and how this differs from our previous implementation. And we also want to go over some of the design choices that we have along the way. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just kind of visualize a chunk of the array. So let's say we have thread blocks that are, you know, they have six threads in them. So, you know, normally the way that our original kernels worked is that, you know, six threads would compute six elements in the final, uh, you know, our final result. So here we'll have, you know, for simplicity, we'll say that these are all one maybe, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, and then one thread will be responsible for calculating each of these values. Now, another thing that we knew about was that we had to take care of you know, things at the very end of execution, or rather things at the very end of the array. And so we'd had some stragglers or you know, where our mask hangs off, we'll have some values out here that we have to take care of. Now, when it comes to loading from shared memory, you know, we don't have those values that are padded by default. So when we're just loading things in from DRAM, we can of course just index whatever value happens to be you know, out here, be it a one in this case, or maybe it's the very beginning of the array, so it's a zero out here. Likewise, with the other side, you know, we could have, uh, this could be at the very end of our big long array of two to the 20 elements. So these could be zeros out here. Otherwise, you know, this could be some thread block in the middle of our big long line of thread blocks. So these could be ones out here. So when it came to DRAM, we could just load these elements in because it's all stored in DRAM. When it comes to shared memory, shared memory is something that we have to manually load things into. So if we don't load it in, we don't have the value. So in this case, we have a couple design decisions. And so we'll go ahead and go over what those are and then the way we've implemented it in our kernel. So one of the design decisions is, you know, let's say that we've got uh, you know, maybe this is, you know, a very simple example. So we've got a six element long array, right? And we have zeros out here, right? So maybe this is, maybe we have a mask. We can actually simplify this down a little bit, right? So let's say that there's two zeros down here. So we have six total threads launched, but we need these values that are out to the side. And this is, you know, this is sometimes called the, uh, the halo, right? It'll, the elements surrounding the array that we need. So in order to get these elements, we have two choices. A, we can either launch a larger size thread block. So instead of launching six threads, we launch eight threads just to load the values in. So those eight threads would load every single one of these values in, right? However, when it comes to computing a final value, these threads out to the side won't take part in the actual computation uh, itself. They'll just be there to, uh, to load things into shared memory. Now, our alternative is to keep with the same amount of threads. So for say calculating six elements in a final array, we'll use uh, six total threads, but this means that our six total threads, some of them will have to load in extra elements into shared memory. And that's the way that I have it implemented. You may be wondering which design is better. Well, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but we'll just have to implement both in order to see. So, you know, exactly how do we do this, right? So normally we just, you know, we could just index off here. So how do we kind of double up on some of the threads? Well, an easy way to do it is that we know, you know, how long uh, our padded array will be, right? Because we know ahead of time how many elements that we're going to be hanging off, because this is just going to be a function of whatever uh, the length of your mask is, and therefore whatever the radius is of your mask. So in this case, you know, we have, we're assuming a five element mask. So for calculating, you know, say for this element, we need these five numbers, right? So we know that there's going to be two hanging off. So because we know that we can just play some games as far as our indexing in order to load things into shared memory. So one of the things that we still want to keep in mind is that we want most of the threads to be doing the same thing for as long as possible. And this is this idea of warp divergence where we want, you know, as, as few times as possible, warps to be diverged. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll take the approach of we'll load everything, considering that we have six threads. We'll start out by just loading, uh, loading in 
the lower six values, right? So in our first iteration, what we'll do is we'll, you know, simply index by whatever the thread ID is for this block, right? And then from the global array, we'll have to offset it by whatever the radius is, right? So it'll be whatever the thread ID is minus some radius value. And this will load in these first six values, which this will all be stored, you know, everything here. We want this stored in shared memory. So the next thing is, how do we get these upper four elements that are left? Well, we don't want to, you know, you may have thought, well, why don't we just load in, you know, where the, you know, elements normally sit, right? So these elements are sitting, uh, you know, we have six threads. Why don't we just load this main array first? And that goes back to this idea that we don't want warp divergence. So if we loaded these six elements first, what happens? Then we have, you know, some threads have to load the lower elements. Some threads have to load the upper elements. And depending how big this gap is, right, these may be in different warps, which means we have we might have multiple warps that are diverged. It also makes life kind of difficult on ourselves because then we have to worry about, you know, indexing from the very beginning of the array and indexing, you know, you know, at the tail or the halo after the array, which is just kind of messy. So we want to simplify this. So what we'll end up doing is for the first load, we'll offset it to load the bottom six values. And then all we have to do is off is uh, to each of these thread in, uh, indices, we just have to add whatever the length of the array is here, right? So here it's six elements, right? And then we have our two elements at the very end. And when we do that, what will end up happening is everything in this case will be added by six. So if we go ahead and move each of these threads six over, what we end up getting is six threads at the very end, right? And then we were left with a very simple, uh, a very simple calculation, where for these two threads that shouldn't do anything, we can just say, you know, if whatever this value is. So in this case, it's going to be, you know, whatever your uh, thread ID is, you know, plus some offset is less than the entire size of the padded array. You know, we'll just ignore these values, right? So we'll just have an if statement that cuts those off. Otherwise, it'll fit these four threads will end up doing the second load into shared memory, right? And this will become a little more apparent once we start looking at the code. But the key idea is we want, you know, we know exactly what values we're going to use and we know which values we're going to reuse. So we'd like to load it into, you know, fast shared memory that's next to the core. Now, we won't see a ton of improvement you know, by tiling this, most of our improvement we get is actually going to be from the uh, uh, using the constant memory, which is something that we're still doing. And the reason why is because we're not really doing a ton of computations on these values that we're loading into shared memory. We're really just using them kind of once, you know, all kind of at the same time. So, you know, generally where we see the most benefit is when we load things into shared memory and we churn on them for quite a while. Right. And then that's where we really start to see the benefits of, you know, not having to go out to main memory every single time. And likewise, it all depends on how much stuff we have in our cache or how many things or how big our working set is. If our working set's sufficiently small, it'll just fit in the cache and we'll hit on it, you know, regardless. So we don't have to. So, you know, the benefit we get from shared memory is going to be, you know, less there as well. So let's go ahead and look at our code for today. So let's go ahead and full screen this. We'll go to convolution and then we'll go to 1D tiled. Okay, so in here we'll see a couple changes. So we'll start at the main function. So one difference right off the bat is that instead of doing, uh, not really the trick uh, that we were doing, you know, previously where we would, you know, just kind of mask off if you went off either side of the array, um, you know, either before the beginning of the, you know, result array or after the end of the result array, you know, we, we're going to go ahead and pad those values, right? So we'll go ahead and calculate whatever the padded size is, which will just be whatever the length of the array is, plus whatever the radius is of the mask times two. And then we'll go ahead and initialize those outside values uh, to zero, right? And so this is just to, you know, kind of simplify the code so we have less conditional statements and we can, everyone can kind of just do the same thing as far as doing the same computation, even if it is on zeros. Okay, so exactly the same kind of uh, 
you know, initialization. It'll be random numbers between 0 and 100, uh, non-inclusive for the array, and it'll be random numbers between 0 and 10, non-inclusive for the mask. All right, and we're still going to do the same CUDA mem copy and CUDA mem copy to symbol. Uh, the only difference is we're going to use shared memory at this time, and we'll use it, uh, we'll have it be dynamically allocated. So how much shared memory do we actually need? Well, every single block uh, in this computation, it's still the same size, it's 256 threads per thread block, which means that they're going to compute 256 uh, values at the very end of execution in the result. So what we need space for is 256 elements from the array, and then we need the halo, right? So we need the elements right before the array and right after the array that's local to this thread block. So we'll need threads of elements, so 256 elements, plus the radius times two, which is both the left side and the right side after the array, and then these are all integers, so size of an int. And then we'll go ahead and call the kernel with, these, uh, with the grid and threads and shared memory values as well as uh, passing in, of course, a pointer to our array, that's the padded array, our result array, which isn't padded, and then uh, the length of the array. So let's go ahead and go up to the kernel itself. This is where the more interesting stuff happens. Now, there's a lot of things you could do in here to you know, kind of limit the instruction overhead. Um, they're not going to contribute a ton to the to overall execution time, but there's things that you could optimize in here as well. So. I, I added most of the you know computations of these kind of intermediate values just to show kind of the progression. So things like calculating you know the mask length divided by two. This is something that you could calculate ahead of time. So what we're going to do is you know on the GPU we'll go ahead and have so here's our shared memory. So extern just says that it's dynamically allocated, so it'll be passed in as a launch parameter, right? And we'll go ahead and call this S array just to, for shared memory array. We'll still calculate a global thread ID. And this will index into our result array as far as what our final result is going to be. We'll calculate the diameter as well, which will be the total number of padded elements. We'll figure out how big of the local arrays we're going to use. So this in padded will be the number of elements in this shared memory uh, piece that's allocated. So every so uh, shared memory is something that's thread block private, or rather, um, it's something that's you know only guaranteed for threads within a thread block. So every single thread block will allocate, you know, basically one line of 256 elements plus the overhanging six elements total. And then we'll do a couple other calculations. It'll simplify our indexing. So we'll go ahead and calculate offset. And this will be uh, where we're actually going to be uh, loading into inside of shared memory. And then we'll have this G offset, which will be our global offset. So this will be where we're you know, indexing into our you know, big array that's in main memory. So we use offset in order to, because these are gonna be staggered loads. So we're going to do one load of the thread block of elements and then a second load of far fewer of the threads actually doing the load. So offset is just used to shift things over, right? And then global offset is to shift things over in the very large array that's out in main memory. So then the first thing we do is uh, exactly what we showed you know, in this diagram is that we'll just load in based upon whatever the thread ID is. So for thread ID zero, they'll load in whatever the zeroth element in this array is, right? And this will be of length, you know, the padded length of, uh, that we calculated here, this in padded. So this load right here will be that lower load. Now over here, we make sure if offset is less than in padded. So if we go back to this diagram, this is what we have over here where we're making sure that whatever the thread is, it's not overhanging past where we actually need. So this is how we kind of say only these four threads need to be active. Okay. And then otherwise it'll just load into whatever the offset is, whatever is at the uh, global offset. So that's just how we shift things over in that big global array. And then we have to call sync threads to make sure that all the values are actually in shared memory before we proceed. So this is just a synchronization uh, call, similar to what we've seen in matrix multiplication when we tiled that. So then we'll need a temp value still, and then the rest of the computation is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is that we don't need to have that if statement anymore because uh, we've made sure that we padded our normal array so that if we're overhanging from the very beginning of the array where normally you know it just wasn't initialized, so we just say, okay, if you're hanging off the beginning, don't do anything because you, you know, it'll be zero anyway. This time we don't have to worry about that because it's zero padded now. So over here, 
you know, it'll just be that inner loop where we go ahead and multiply everything starting from zero, going up by whatever the uh, mask is and whatever in that shared memory array. So we're not you know, indexing that array that's in main memory, we're indexing locally in whatever's in that shared memory. And then we go ahead and write back the results. And so the results we can just index based upon the thread ID because each thread ID is still going to calculate you know, the specific value. So um, thread ID zero will calculate element zero. Thread ID 256 will uh, will calculate element 256 in that uh, result array. And so we don't need to do any kind of offset with this. That offset um, is really just uh, working with, you know, the staggered loads that we need to do. And then, of course, we've updated our verify result in order to take into account that we have a zero padded array now. And we'll go ahead and check that. So let's go ahead and run this on 2 to the 20 elements. So we'll do NVCC dash O convolution. All right. And then we'll go ahead and first just run it, make sure that it doesn't break. OK, so we didn't make any functional mistakes. So the next thing to do is to call. Uh, so we can profile a number of things as well. So we can we can so you can use this dash dash metrics to see things like what's the global hit rate. Uh, what's the stall constant memory dependency so how many of these dependencies are based upon misses in like the constant cache um, or we can just run it and get the execution time and so we'll limit it to that for now so we'll go ahead and run this so we see that it took about 105 microseconds to run the tiled version and then if we go back to the previous version so 1d constant memory so this is without tiling we do the uh, same compilation and we go ahead and run it again, we see that it takes about 113 microseconds. So we do save about you know, 10 microseconds, or you know, probably around 8% of total time here. So not a terribly big jump like we got with the constant cache, but the constant cache was really nice, you know, because every single you know thread block was going to use that exact same value, and we could guarantee that you know after the first miss, everybody was going to hit on it after that. Um, we got we saw a little bit less and there's still optimizations that we could do in this kernel and we could also compare it to the second kind of kernel which is to launch more threads than we need to and then just mask some off for the actual computation but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video so that's how you would do something like cache tiling in a 1d convolution as always feel free to check out my stuff on github.com slash coffee before arch plenty of examples on c++ stuff uh, parallel programming in c++ object-oriented design patterns, as well as stuff on Python and some stuff on MIPS assembly as well. So we looked at CUDA programming today. So I've got this all broken down with the videos on the left and the files used in those videos on the right. So feel free to check those out as well. So we looked at convolution and then we looked at uh, tiled. So this is the code that we use today. Feel free to you know download this, play around with it, you know, even do some optimizations on your own if you think you can make it better. There's plenty of room still for uh, for improvement, maybe something like, uh, you know, once you get to things like 2D convolution or, uh, you know, every time, anytime you have a for loop, you can sometimes squeeze out a little more performance by throwing in some pragma unrolls or doing some loop unrolling in order to remove some of that conditional check overhead. But like I said, that's going to do it for today. Uh, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.